What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files, Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, review of the latest episode of HBO's Scenes from a Marriage. We're breaking down episode 3 titled The Veil of Tears, an episode in which we literally see the roles being changed from last week to this week and there is so much to unpack in this episode. I'm so excited to break it all down for you all, but before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well welcome to the community. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell, that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you all enjoyed this spoiler discussion, well, make sure to like and share this review. It really helps out the channel a lot, but also appreciate the support. And in those comments, first and foremost, last week's comments were on fire. I thank you all for engaging in the video, leaving your responses, answering my questions, really kind of diving deep into your personal experience with relationships. It means a lot to me. So let's continue that conversation in the comments for this week's video, because listen, I'm looking at my notes here. We might be here for a while because this is a lot to unpack, but I want to know you all's thoughts of this episode. But more importantly, I'm going to get to this at the end of the video. In the context of the show, if you were Jonathan and you were roles reversal, if you were a female in Jonathan's position, whatever the case may be, would you take Mirror back? I want to know it. Again, just based on everything we've seen on screen, not off screen, but everything we've seen in the show so far, would you take her back? Let's talk about it in the comments. So let's get into this breakdown here because, again, I'm looking at these notes. Uh, we might be here for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. This, go ahead and sit down on your couch. Get your popcorn. Get your drinks. Settle down. Get to, you know, type in, in the in the live chat that I'm going to have on this premiere in the video. And, of course, leave your thoughts in the comments because we're going to going to dive into this thing here. So let's get into it as Mira has made her return. She has a new hairstyle uh, and she is hugging. She's they're, they're willingly hugging each other because go back to last week, the last scene of last week where she was like, uh, no, and just walks out of the house. Now she's willingly trying to give him a hug. And we know her intentions a little bit later, but you know, they, they share a little, little kiss on the cheek and they almost kiss each other on the mouth, almost kind of like a routine of what they used to do when they were married for 12 years. But they they, they, they stop for a second, but let's get into this here. As I said, that she has a new hairstyle. Well, we got a new man in Jonathan, or at least I say he has at least new furniture, right? As Mayor points out that he's made some adjustments to their old home. The living room was filled with a bunch of Ikea furniture. And uh, I'm just thinking in my head, I want to see that attic because we know the attic was a big topic of hand last week that kind of sparked that conversation that we got last week. But we don't see the attic. But instead, remember, that attic was supposed to be his office. His office is being occupied with a new setup, which we'll talk about in this breakdown. But it seems like uh, things with Polly were maybe a little bit more serious than I initially thought. I thought that this was maybe a fling, maybe some lust, which we'll get into the relationship in a second with uh, Mary and Polly. But it seems like Polly was really connecting to Ava, taking her to school. We'll talk about the pancakes being made at night, but it seems like it was it was serious there for a bit uh, as we kind of get more into the conversation. And I'm starting to think in my head in regards to uh, how much this is going to affect Ava with this decision, how confusing it must be for her. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But the question I have at hand for you all, since I posed so many questions in last week's video, but this is for anyone to answer, but more particularly those out there that's watching this video, if you have been in a relationship, had a child with someone you relationship with, and you're no longer with that person, how long it, how long was it when you allow your new partner to meet your child? And if the roles were reversed, if you were the person that hasn't found someone to be in a relationship with, but you find out that your ex-lover has now met someone, how comfortable were you to allow them to see your child? I just want to kind of know gauge wax. I, I never had a child. I don't know how I would feel about when I would let someone meet my child, how I would feel about my ex-partner allowing them to meet their new partner. But I just want to know you guys' thoughts on that for, again, that have experienced that in real life or, you know, what you would do in that situation. I'm just kind of curious. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But let's move on as Mira has come here to set up this conversation because she has something on her mind. She always got something on her mind, right? She's always thinking about something uh, <laughs> that can affect her relationship. But let's, before we get into this conversation, I don't know if you all notice, but we see that Jonathan is starting to go back to kind of his old ways, kind of rediscover who he used to be before he kind of got into this 12-year relationship as he's paying more attention to his Jewish uh, roots. He also, I don't know if you all met, noticed in this episode a couple times, in that moment where she noticed that he's having the dinner that he's uh, he hasn't had in over 10 years, she mentions that there is new furniture, you're going back to your old roots. When you think about a relationship, 
you kind of, I don't want to say lose yourself, but you kind of conform to that relationship, right? And the topic at hand is kind of like when you're in a relationship, you kind of compromise with your partner, right? You can't be the same. You don't want to completely change, but you can't be the same single person you were before you met that person because obviously you can't live live a single life when you're in a relationship. I mean, some people do. Uh, Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But more times than not, you find yourself, okay, I, I used to do this when I was single, but I can't do this now that I'm in a relationship or married or have kids or whatever the case may be. So it's very interesting to kind of see him try to go back to who he used to be before he got in this relationship, kind of conform in that relationship. And again, I, I just think that that's something that everyone does. They somewhat compromise themselves, not not negatively or positively. They just adjust with that relationship and, and try to appease their partner and try to you know be the best partner they can be in that particular moment. But yet again, let's get back to these little little intimate moments as they hug each other for the second time in this episode. And this this hug seemed a little bit more intimate and seemed to be one of those hugs like, oh, I've missed you, but, you know, and we'll get to the but a little bit later. <laughs> but moving on, let's get to this topic at hand as she brings up relocation. She has this promotion and she's going to be moving to, well, she has the opportunity to live permanently in London. And the idea gets brought up about, okay, what are we going to do with Ava? What are we going to do as co-parents? And now she she wants to discuss this. And I was, I don't, in my head, I was just thinking, two things. She's either already accepted the position because she goes to Jonathan and says, you know, I want to talk to you first before I made any decisions. Knowing what we saw last week in regards to her making decisions for Jonathan to a certain extent, I feel like she either already took the job or she already knows she's going to take the job. That's what I was kind of thinking in my head uh, based on the conversation that they had last week. But Jonathan immediately shuts down this idea or this option on the table of Ava maybe coming to Le- London occasionally as he points out that it's, did you you knew I was going to say no. You just wanted to get a reaction out of me just to see how I was going to react to that comment, which Let's further this conversation. As Jonathan notices that she has more on her mind and she goes ahead and puts it all out there that she wants them to move to London with her. I'm like, yo, Mara is something else, man. She is a very interesting individual and she wants to have custody of, uh, uh, you know, share the custody as, as as they have it right now in the U.S. So again, she she's all about herself right now in these last two episodes. It's, it's her convenience and how it helps her, how it benefits her. She goes into, you know, oh, you know, Jonathan, London will be great for you in your career. And you always talk about how this country, America, is so toxic. And, and Ava, oh, she's going to love London. Just... She's good. Whatever she does as a real job, I can't remember if it was marketing or, or something in the corporate world, she is great at what she does because she's pitching this idea to Jonathan. Like he's going to be like, all right, let's pack the bags tonight and move to London. She's good. She's good. But let's get to the cop topic at hand as Jonathan brings up. This is a disruption to our lives. You know, Jonathan shuts down this notion again, and, and, and Mara is treating them like luggage. Like, anywhere I go, you guys are going to go. Uh, and this is, she doesn't care of how this is going to alter their lives, the situation, the families, the friends, the relationships they've developed this whole time they've lived in their community, which, speaking of community, the word community gets brought up in this conversation. As Jonathan mentions family and friends, and we see Mara kind of laughs at all, this laughs off that notion that there's other people besides her in this situation as you know he goes about saying that oh I know community isn't big in this relationship that you guys have because you know you have this global lifestyle kind of in in, you know indicating that you know uh uh, Mara and Paulie essentially they don't have stability they're just kind of living this facade living this kind of in their own bubble or at least she thinks that right again Mara's very self-indulgent. She's very kind of, you know, all about herself, kind of narcissistic in a certain way. But let's get to this big word here that, again, role reversals in this episode. The word, the D word comes out, divorce. Last week, Mara said it. Now Jonathan is saying that word. And just notice how the the pendulum has changed. If you look at last week's episode, how, again, Mara dominated the conversation. She controlled the room. She controlled the situation. It was all about what she wanted, and it was just more or less like we were just seeing Jonathan's reactions to this because she already had her mindset. 
look at how things have changed in this episode as he's now bringing up the word the divorce as you know he mentions uh let's just let's just get this over with you know it's almost like I'm, it's like death it's like i'm sitting in between life and death let's just get down with this and i don't know if you guys saw Meryl, she was kind of shocked she was a little bit caught off guard by that she did not expect that and i'm thinking in my head oh she wants her cake she wants ice cream she wants balloons she wants the whole goddamn party she wants the poly lifestyle and she wants her family at the same time man she is She's something else, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, see this conversation continue to move on as she kind of brings up, you know, the, the, oh, we can get a divorce in a day, Jonathan. That's what you want. I can get it done in a week. And she says, you know, why do you want to get a divorce so soon? Are you, do you want to get married soon? Are you dating someone? I'm like, oh, wouldn't you like to know, Miss Jealous uh, Mara? And, and when she said, are you dating someone? I don't know if it was just me. Let me know if you guys were watching at home. I was thinking, oh, he's probably dating that girl from episode one, his student, which it doesn't seem like he's working anymore, so it wouldn't be like a student, uh, you know, conflict of interest because he's not a, technically a teacher. He's on leave right now, but then I looked it up on IMDb because we later find out who he's dating. The, the girl goes by the name of Lauren, and the girl from episode one that I'm talking about, I believe her name was Daniela, so it wasn't, I was thinking it was her, but it wasn't her uh, unless she goes by Lauren. That's like her, I don't know, nickname that they call freaky nicknames or something, but <laughs> either way, back to old habits we see that Jonathan is smoking again uh which you know I'm like dude don't you have like major asthma issues but neither here nor there uh we see this is yet another example of him trying to get back to the person he used to be because he was so you know he was conforming he was kind of switching his lifestyle to you know better men or be in this relationship with Mara but moving on we see the the, the living situation the li living arrangements for Jonathan and Ava since um Mara has left the home and we see that Jonathan has now made his office into a dual bedroom situation where Ava's on one side, he's on the other side, just because, and, and we see as Mara makes her way upstairs, it's almost like, this was like, I, I don't want to go upstairs. It was almost like it was a crime scene, like there was some type of supernaturalness that he just doesn't want to go up there. And I think it kind of boils down to, he doesn't want to be reminded of her. He just doesn't want to go back to that. As we find out later in this episode, he he was in a very, very, very dark spot that we'll talk a little bit about later. But this is where Mara brings up her whole kind of detachment conversation that she feels like all the little inklings of whatever she left in the house is no longer there anymore. And then they kind of get deeper into this conversation in regards to dependency on objects and the house and the family and this brings me, and I have no issues with people with marriage. I just think like as time has grown on and the idea of marriage seems to be more appealing than the actual concept of marriage in regards to finding that one person, if you all believe in that, soulmates, what have you, finding that person that you want to commit to for the rest of your life, right? And some people obviously have that, you know, people that are married, happily married, 50, 60 for their whole entire lives. And then you have some people that the, the divorce rate is higher than ever before, right? Because I, and I, and I, I don't, I'm not an expert by any means, but I think that shows how people, again, they're in love more with the idea of marriage than so the commitment of loving someone. They love the idea of house, kids, dog, picket fence, you know, all that stuff and, and what comes with it, just the, that, that, that idea of marriage more so than like actually loving someone and no matter what's in the house, what's the materialistic things, it's the person you love. So that's kind of the mindset that they kind of have, this kind of conversation that they have in this moment, which I think is, is, to me, such a big thing in relationships is just, do you like the idea of being with someone or do you like the idea, love the idea that you found someone that you can connect to on that type of level that you want to spend the life of your, you know, the rest of your life with? Listen, well, this is therapy session, ladies and gentlemen. This is, uh, again, I'm not a therapist, but this is this is relationship talk here and this is what I love about it. So let me know you guys just thought about that conversation of dependency of objects, the idea of marriage versus the actual concept of loving someone. Let's let's talk about it all. Let's go ahead and have that discussion. So more wine is being poured at this point, ladies and gentlemen, in the episode. And I like to call this moment here Alcohol and Truth, which is probably going to be the next uh, Drake album. But <laughs> as we move on, as Mara gets into her relationship with Pauly, as he's living the American dream, and it's almost like when she was talking about that, and in my head, I'm almost thinking she's like almost kind of reliving her youth, kind of reliving the, the 12 years that she's been in a marriage and kind of going back to that kind of younger, you know, living in a high rise, traveling across the world. She's kind of living that through Pauly. Again, the idea more so than loving this individual again kind of speaks to her uh as a person maybe particularly but she brings up the whole like not really having 
a safety net with Pauly, not having the security, the stability with Pauly in this relationship. This still goes back to, you know, noticing this scene. Is, is he's like, oh, I know you don't really, you, you're undermining the relationship that we've established. She mentions, she keeps saying honey. She said like honey like three or four times in this episode. So it's just like, again, look at how things have changed. The role reversals from last week to this week as she, like I said, keeps calling him honey. Uh, you notice the, you know, the hugging and the kissing on the cheek. She doesn't want to be with Polly. She wants this relationship back, ladies and gentlemen, as we'll get more into that. Jonathan brings up that Mara's defense mechanism has always been kind of a, a correlation to her loneliness. And when she was younger in, in college, as Jonathan tells Mara that he's seen a therapist, um, he's, he's, you know, is helping him cope through what happened in their relationship. And I think she was so shocked by that because I don't know if it was, I could have sworn he brought up in episode one that I don't know if he believed in couples therapy even though in episode two he's like okay we can do it so i don't know if he was one of those people that like doesn't believe like a therapist can help fix people's problems but now again seeing something has changed he now wants to talk to someone about how things kind of crumble in their relationship so getting back into it all i'm just watching this episode by the way i'm like in halfway through the episode at this point what makes this show so unique to me and, and in particularly the performances we all know when it comes to great performances, we all look at the person giving a speech, giving an awesome performance. But what I love about this show is like looking at the actors and how Jonathan, or Jonathan, how Oscar Isaac and Jessica Chastain, their reactions to what their acting partner is saying. And it's just like the naturalism, if that's even a word, the, the natural take that they have in the response, in how what they're saying and how they just convey those emotions are just like so perfect to me. They're doing such, I'm just beyond impressed of how they're listening and reacting to what they're saying and how, how natural it seems because we all know actors great actors yeah it's pretty easy to read lines off of a script but it's it's more impressive when you can bring those lines to life and make it seem like it's their natural tongue it's like naturally coming out of them it's not a script it's not a play it's not a movie it's not a mini series which you know i'm on a tangent now this makes me think of all these cold openings how the show opens with the behind the scenes as these actors are pretending to be in a marriage correlate that to the show how they're pretending to be in certain aspects so again this show just has me thinking on just so many levels of just being so impressed by the show so far but let's get back to the show speaking of the show but let's get back to Mara wants to hear Jonathan's uh, morning routine his morning pages I think they called it the suggestion that he got from his therapist and look how Mara is so invested in Jonathan speaking of these pages I, I was thinking to myself I bet you 22-year-old, or however old Paulie is, I know he was much younger than um, the Mara, I bet you he isn't as mature as or as intellectual or in, in tune with his feelings as Jonathan is, and he probably wants to, you know, have Mara play Switch with him or record some TikTok videos for him. I'm just thinking, like, she's just, like, she's probably missing, again, I think that she was, like, almost living this lifestyle of, like, youth and just, like, she missed out on 12 years of, like, not necessarily partying because they're both they both seem to be very successful in their in their corp in their you know business life but it seems like she wants to kind of go back to that time bolt when she was younger but getting back to the episode as Jonathan talks about his father and, and this is the the morning pages he talks about his father he talks about his mother he talks about his upbringings and how it shaped him to be the person that he is today and that maybe explains why you know last week's discussion was whose fault was it who brings up the 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 unhappiness is it the person that's unhappy is it the person that the opposite should they have seen the signs well maybe he didn't see the signs or if he did see the signs he didn't want to express those signs because of the way his mom and dad taught him to kind of or at least his dad taught him to keep his emotions bottled in if you see an issue just play it through just live the marriage again going back to the opening pretending to be happy in the marriage so i think that's a, a big moment for jonathan speaking those words and realizing from mary's perspective i know we've been pretty harsh on mary these last couple of weeks but just knowing if you were in her position you're you're in this marriage this commitment with this person that's always in their head and keeps bottling their emotions in that can be very uh, uh that's a huge disconnect if you can't connect with your partner on an emotional level that disrupts the whole concept of being in love and not truly giving yourself to that personal relationship. So really big stuff there, really good character stuff there within the, uh, that moment there. But going back into it, 
as as it's happening, as I said, the alcohol, all truth comes out. They kiss, and not only do they kiss, it's a long, it's, it's it's one of those like, baby, I missed you kisses, right? And they go from that. It's a lot of passion, passion leads to the floor. There's a little bump and grinding going on, and this is where she, you know, she's talking her stuff. By the way, uh, but let, let's let's seriously talk about this scene. Traditionally speaking, and someone even mentioned in the comments again. The comments last week were fantastic. Someone mentioned last week how it is so refreshing and kind of it's so different to see this type of concept in regards to in tv shows and movies we normally see the the man is the one leaving the family it's the man leaving the wife for the younger girl it's the man who's emotionless to 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 this investment of marriage in this relationship but that's different that's not this show we're seeing it from the woman's perspective she's the one that left she left for a younger guy she put her family on hold for her you know emotions at that time and when they're having this you know sexual moment he stops it. She doesn't stop it, as we would see normally, traditionally, the woman saying, no, I don't want this. I've moved on. It's Jonathan saying that. So it, it, and that's, a, that's something we don't see. We don't see that vulnerability from, from males, right? It's a taboo for men to be in, to- in tune with their, you know, emotions. You know, normally it's, you know, if, if, <laughs> I'll be frank with you all. If I was Jonathan in that position, you got John, Jan- Jessica Chastain giving you all the stuff, talking her, you know what? I don't know if I would be able to resist, but we see him resist because this is why he's resisting. This is where we get really deep into the weeds of his mindset. Jonathan goes on to how he was, and this is, by the way, this is big because I was wondering how long has it been from episode two to episode three? It's been over a year. So they haven't seen, from what I gathered, it seemed like they haven't really seen each other that much because she says every time we're in a room, we, we fight. So I don't know how often they've seen each other in that year, but it's been a year since episode two to three. He goes into that year, into what he experienced, what he was going through in that moment. And he goes into, he was basically on autopilot, you know, taking Ava to school. You know, he left work. He felt like he was losing his mind. And we go to a deeper level. He didn't want to live his life. Uh, we go to another deeper level. He wanted Mary dead. We go to another labor level, and I, I smile because it's just like, man, he was really in a, in a dark spot, and, and uh, you know, uh, I think we all, you know, we're getting serious now. We, we, we've all had dark moments, especially, you know, speaking from personal experience, being in a, in a long relationship, and when things end, you, you know, it's kind of, it, it hits, you know, and I think even, you know, long relationship, short relationship, when you, when you love someone, you think you love someone, you, you think this is the one, and, and when things don't work out, Life is, you don't know what to do. And he mentions, like I say, we, we've been two levels deep. Now we're going to the third, the, the deepest level. He didn't want Ava to live anymore, uh, which to me was just like, wow, th- this this was a, uh, his life. His life was gone. His his wife, his, his kid, himself, he was gone. That's how much he was in this relationship. And that, and that, 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 sca- that, that word scares me, just thinking of being so committed to a relationship that you don't even want to live your life because you think that that's what life is all up and again it's not to frame it like when you find love it's great but when you invest yourself so much in love that you don't think there's nothing beyond that that's some scary stuff there um let me know how you all feel about that I, I, it's, it's, it's it's like i said it's scary it's great it's wonderful when you find love but again loving so much loving so much i can't even talk loving so someone so much that you can't even imagine your life Moving on, if, if, if it doesn't work out. It's, it's some pretty interesting stuff there. But uh, moving on, now after hearing that he wanted to die and wanted, and wanted Ava to die and wanted, you know, Mary to die, Mary goes ahead and she doesn't have really much to say about that situation that Jonathan has mentioned, but it says she focuses on herself and she goes into how the decision was hard for her. Uh, Mind you, like, she just heard all this stuff and, and, and you know, and all and she goes into stop. She never stopped loving him and she felt so bad for when they broke up. And, you know, this whole week, and this is where I, I could have, I would have. You know, I would have tapped out. I'm like, all right, just take me. Take me, Jessica Chastain. But he, he he didn't. She goes ahead and says, you know, I've been wanting you this whole week. I couldn't wait to come over here. And begins to, again, talk in her stuff. But yet again, he, he doesn't want to go back to that spot that we just talked about. So he stops it yet again. And, you know, because, again, that... That strength, it, it, Jessica Chastain was coming at him to my Marvel fans. She was coming at him like Thanos with all Infinity Stones, 
But my man had Captain America's shield and was just bouncing it off, vibranium all day. He 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 said no and and stopped this uh, sexual activity from happening. A lot of strength uh, from Jonathan. But again, think about where that strength comes from. How dark of a place that he was in, and he does not want to go back to that place. As she's starting to leave and just thinking about you know what she came there for, and maybe, and I'm thinking at this point. Maybe all that lust, maybe all that stuff with Paulie is is kind of wearing out. And literally, as I'm thinking that, I'm writing, looking at my notes here. She says to Jonathan, "What if Paulie doesn't come to London? Would you consider maybe moving to London with me?" And he says, "It doesn't matter if Paulie's coming. What matters is you left our family. I don't care if it was Dwayne the Rock, goddamn Johnson." You left the family. So shout out to Jonathan having some uh, sticking up for himself as I thought he was sticking up for himself. Because as we move forward, as Jonathan, you know, says what he says, it's, you know, uh, the shoes on the other foot, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, the role reversals, because just thinking of last week when he was just like begging her to stay and hugging her and stay, stay, stay. She leaves, runs back to him, hugs him, I love you, and then she is abstained. So again, it's just it's so interesting to see how that switched within you know well, in a week of, a, of the show, but a year in, in the context of the show, and she stays the night. Obviously, we see them having this kind of bedtime routine, you know, them taking off the clothes, kind of getting back to things, right? It looks like Jonathan is maybe open to the idea of getting this marriage back together. And, uh, man, this was uh, a, a really interesting moment here as, you know, they kind of laugh and they're, you know, seem to be in a good spot. And I didn't see this coming, but uh, <laughs> we get a phone call or we get a text message and several text messages and, and phone calls. And Mara's like, oh, maybe you should check it out. He takes the call. I'm thinking that maybe, you know, something like she got into a car accident. And, and by the way, the, the lady's name is Laura. And we're, we can hear the conversation. And the conversation kind of goes with, you know, Laura, yes, she's still here. No, she hasn't left. She's in the bed. And, you know, it's a very awkward situation, by the way. If, if you're on the other line, shout out to Laura. I, I, let me know how, if you guys feel bad for her. I don't. We haven't met this character yet. But I feel bad for her because I would imagine Laura was pretty pr- critical to Jonathan's, you know, if we want to call it recovery, to getting back to himself because I would imagine she was there to confine in him or she, he was confining in her and really kind of letting things out and then she was there and now it's just like awkward because he's breaking up with you over the phone. So shout out to Laura. I feel bad for you. Maybe Laura and Polly can be a thing <laughs> season two. Uh, but moving forward, you know, again, the current wife is sleeping over. You're breaking up with your current girlfriend. It's a really awkward situation that is just like, wow, it is pretty crazy what's going on. But then my mind is already blown at this point. It gets even further b- blown where we see Mara is now kind of siding with the girlfriend saying that, you know, you know, maybe it's forgivable. I'm over here. You know, we didn't really do anything. Uh, and I'm just like, well, what do you want, Mara? Do you want to be with him? Do you not want to be with him? And I'm thinking Jonathan's thinking the same thing as more of truth comes out as Jonathan sees through Mara's, you know, her, her, her BS and her fear of detachment and her chaos and the chaos that she's created in this last year. And, you know, Mara hasn't dealt with her issues and she even admits that she has issues, which I think is something that we should all do sometimes. It's so important to address the issues. If you know that there's something wrong, address it, don't ignore it, don't suppress it, uh, as she's been doing. So I'm, I'm drained. I'm drained at this point in the episode. I'm on the edge of my seat watching the episode on the edge of my bed Heavy hitter after heavy hitter, and we see Jonathan wants to play Mara a voicemail. Ladies and gentlemen, this voicemail is from no other than Paulie, and Paulie basically says that he's had enough. Uh, That if, if she wants you back, dude, I am not stopping her. You guys happily ever after, get back together, have a whole another kid if you want to. I'm wiping my hands of the situation deuces to this whole situation which i'm like all right shout out to paulie again as they say the green isn't always greener or the, let me rephrase that the grass is always greener on the other side but we see ava always coming in at the perfect time she's like oh is, uh, where, where am i where's paulie mommy uh, i'm hungry he makes me pancakes i'm like damn this girl is <laughs> she's kind of ruthless right now she's a little girl well, you know she doesn't know any better but uh i guess paulie let her eat pancakes but i don't think pa- she'll be seeing paulie anytime soon but we end things with jonathan singing her a, a, a nighttime story and we get the end of the episode so Wow. Wow. Like I said, I was so impressed by the performances. I was so impressed by how the role reversal from one week to this week, from one year to, you know, obviously the context of the show. I was so impressed by seeing, again, we don't normally see 
the roles of of the of the male being the one that's resisting the female we don't normally see the wife leaving the family um you know as media portrays it it's normally the other way around so that was very impressive and then to see him really dive into that mindset you know that dark spot that he was in this this was another fantastic episode i know this show isn't for everyone you know relationships and drama and and you know these type of conversation feelings <laughs> aren't what people like to engage with sometimes but this is a, this is a fantastic show this is this is why i love this show it's because I think, uh, you know, we can all relate to some of these situations at hand from either perspective, whether you are Jonathan in this moment or whether you've been Mara in this moment or whether you know someone that's been these characters. It's something that I think we, we've all seen before. And I think that's what makes the show great is, you know, this is this is what's outside of the, the re, this is reality at points. Right. So uh, I'm loving the show. But more importantly, I'm loving the interactions with I'm having with you all. So go ahead. I hope you're watching this on a live stream or the live premiere. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I I, I tend to try to pop in and out and and, and show you guys appreciation and interact with you all. But once this video is done, I want to know your thoughts in the comments. More important, you know, all the stuff I pose in the video. But if you were Jonathan in that situation with everything we've been gotten given in this show, would you take her back? Would you go back to that relationship? Let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I know I have. I'm going to uh, get some water. I'm going to uh, clear my mind of all this, this this emotional stuff and get back to the rah, 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 you know, macho man type of stuff. Now, I love uh, interacting with you all, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, make sure before you leave to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. That way you don't miss any more of the content. Hope you all are staying safe. Hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure to subscribe. Check out my other content. We'll see you on another video.